Hello, welcome to another weekly update. Um, I hope you're doing really well. Lots of interesting things to talk about this week. Three kind of big blog posts and including some news items that I haven't seen sort of reported elsewhere. So um, yeah, I wanted to bring your attention to them because I think they're really interesting and, uh, and exciting actually. So here are some things uh, that are new. So first up, blog post that I did uh, just yesterday actually around, now I find this really exciting actually. So if you're a Microsoft Teams developer and you've built tabs and or mess messaging extensions for Microsoft Teams and lots and lots of, of us have, you can take those Teams and messaging extensions and, it, and bring them to Outlook. So let's play that through for a minute. So users can be in Outlook writing emails and whatever. They can access your messaging extension that you built for Teams. They can use it right inside Outlook to assist them when they're creating their emails as well. And they can access your tabs that you built for Microsoft Teams. They can access them from inside the, their Outlook clients as well. So this is really exciting actually, because it brings, it takes what you've built for Microsoft Teams and it says, well actually, like let's recognize that users don't spend 100% of their time in Teams still. They do spend time in other applications. One of those other applications is Outlook. It's a similar um, kind of idea. It's a similar concept of you know messaging and, and writing and receiving messages. So let's take that same stuff. Let's bring it to users where they're at um, and, and bring that kind of investment that developers have already made and bring it into uh, Outlook. So I think this is really interesting. I think it's really cool. Um, I'm excited to see it. This is my blog post about it. You can see a picture in here on how it's going to look in Outlook when you do all this. There is quite a lot, I'm just going to say, there is quite a lot of stuff to think about um, if you're going to do this. Uh, if you are bringing it into Outlook, the first thing is that this is dev preview only right now. So this isn't something that is production ready. Um, it is just in developer preview. The idea is that developers can just try it out and see what works, see where the gaps are, see how their application might run inside Outlook. There are quite a few things you need to do first. The biggest one really is you need to bring your code base up to spec with um, the Teams JavaScript client SDK v2, which is currently in preview. So again, you're gonna, not going to want to do this in production. This is a fork thing that you're going to want to do um, because there's quite a lot of upgrade steps you need to do. There's a couple of big breaking changes that have happened in this API. Um, so the first really big one to be aware of uh, is around um, callback functions. So callback functions uh, have been completely replaced with promises. So what does that mean? Well, uh, it's quite a lot to take on uh, when you do the upgrade process, but basically everywhere you're calling the uh, in the using the Teams SDK, the JavaScript SDK, you'll be using callback functions to get stuff done. That's all been replaced with promises now. So you need to go through and replace your code with promises or you could use uh, async await functions. So um, that's one big change you're gonna have to make. There is another change you have to make as well um, around uh, some of the naming of stuff has changed. Some of the functions have moved namespaces it's all about tidying up this SDK and making it easier to work with by grouping together API calls into kind of groups of functions called capabilities. Uh, and it's just recognizing actually that now some of these functions are slightly bigger than Teams now, like because they're being called from Outlook and stuff like that, and really uh, going in places that maybe wasn't thought about and wasn't envisaged when the SDK was first written there are some changes now. So there's quite a few bit to do to do that upgrade process. Honestly, the easiest thing to do is to use the Teams Toolkit. I go through that in my blog as well. Um, I go through why, but basically the Teams Toolkit will walk you through the process. This is really cool as well. It's also gonna go through your code and it'll, it's gonna add to-do entries against all your callback functions that need changing into promises or async awaits, which is really nice. So it gives you like a list to work through. It will also kind of, call out um, all the places where the, the naming has changed and all the things you need to fix up. So um, I would, if you possibly can, I would use that uh, that Teams toolkit. Um, I think it's probably a good way to go. Anyway, once you've done all of that, now you're ready to take it to Outlook. And there's a, um, there's a developer manifest you can use, like a preview manifest. 
um, for that Outlook functionality. So you need to rebuild and repackage your application with that new manifest. And once you've done all of that and republished and sideloaded, because you can't take this stuff to the store at the moment because it's still in preview. But once you've sideloaded, then you'll see it showing up in Outlook. So this is very much for developers only right now. It's not kind of ready to roll out everywhere. It's still in developer preview. But having said that, absolutely worth taking your application and seeing what it looks like in Outlook, uh, making any tweaks that you might want to make and need uh, and get ready because this stuff is coming. And I think it's really exciting that this functionality is being extended out to places other than Teams. And that investment that you've made in Teams apps and extensions is something that you can now take elsewhere. So that's uh, that's kind of big news for this week, I think. And I think that's going to, we're going to see this more and more. Uh, and I think we're going to see, I don't know, this is maybe a bit of a, a bold prediction, but I think some of the technology that today we think of as Microsoft Teams extensibility, I think might just evolve into Microsoft 365 extensibility, but we'll see. Also interesting and exciting to see where some of the newer stuff around um, Microsoft Loop comes in to some of this stuff as well. Um, but again, we're just going to have to wait and see on that because all that stuff is super new as well. Okay, other big things. There are some new uh, API calls in Microsoft Graph for hiding and unhiding ch uh, chats in Microsoft Teams. So this is really new. This um, this only made it to the graph documentation a few days ago. And right now, uh, I don't see it in the change log anywhere. So I think I think it is going to come to the change log. They just haven't written it up yet. What is this? These are two new API calls that you can make in Microsoft Graph, and you can make them against a Teams chat, and they will hide that chat from the user. So this is uh, a delegated permission thing right now. Um, meaning that you can't do this with application permissions. So you need a logged in user and you can only hide user uh, chats against that user. You can't go and hide other users' chats. And I'm going to come back to that in a second. So uh, what is this? So given a specific chat ID, you can call slash hide for user. And you can't see that because it's way too small. There we go. Um, you can call hide for user and uh, that will hide the, the chat for that user. There is a kind of something odd being left in here that sort of suggests that maybe it is going to become available for application permissions at some point in the future, um, because it is a bit odd that you call it with delegated permissions with a chat ID, but then you also pass the user to hide the chat for in the request body. Uh, that sort of leaves open the door, I think, because it doesn't make sense. This is superfluous in a delegated mode because you already know who the user is. So I think it kind of leaves the door open to it being something that is possibly going to be available for application permissions as well in the future. But right now it is just delegated user permissions. There is also a corresponding unhide as well. And uh, there's just a note as well that if you use anything like send message to kind of send a message into the chat and it's hidden, doing that will unhide it, which kind of makes sense. It's kind of how you'd want it to work and operate, I think. Uh, no real surprises there. It's just nice to know that you don't have to manually do that unhide if you do need to send something back to the channel. So what's this for? I don't know, really. I mean, it's interesting. I feel like probably the use cases applications that the user is already working with where you've got a bot um, maybe messaging the user about some specific piece of information that is either very timely or um, once it's been acted on is no longer relevant and so it's it's useful to be able to hide that chat from the user again. Um, I don't think the use case is really giving users a place for them to choose chats to hide and like you know tidying up or anything because you can do all of that stuff in the teams client today so unless there's some kind of bulk action around hiding all the chats that i'm missing this feels much more like something uh, built into an application built into a kind of an overall solution where you've got maybe a bot sending the user messages and the user conversing with the bot and then saying right i'm done with that now like hide that from me because it's no longer relevant show it again should it become relevant in the future so that's what i think it's for um, we're just going to have to wait and see how people use it. I imagine there is a use case in mind. Um, what we might find as well is that uh, 
you know, if some more documentation comes out about this, maybe some blog posts or stuff in the tech community, we'll get some of that context of, of why um, this API is here. But for certain scenarios, I can see it definitely being useful really around that kind of, you've got a, you know, you've got a, a bot application that is conversing with the user as part of a bigger solution. Then, and then that user also has maybe a tab that where you've got that delegated permission, right? Uh, you've got a tab open as well. The, the user has that tab open. They can interact with the application that way. So, uh, yeah, two new API calls that you can make use of today. And finally, uh, one more thing I want to tell you about and call your attention to is um, a blog post by Marcus Merler, um, which is a really, uh, really in detail, really like this blog post, actually. Um, and it's all about building apps for Microsoft Teams meetings. So I've spoken about this quite a lot before. Uh, relatively new functionality um, compared to some of the other uh, ways that you can extend Microsoft Teams. And uh, yeah, Ignat announced around about a year ago now, actually. And um, yeah, they basically allow developers to bring experiences into Microsoft Teams meetings. Anyway, in Marcus's post, uh, he goes through in great detail exactly how you do this and putting he puts together like a sample application, which is uh, a really nice one, actually. It lets people record their name um, and then shows uh, like a sidebar in the meeting so you can play how people uh, pronounce their name so that when you're addressing them in the meeting, uh, you can address them correctly and properly. So uh, let me show you his blog post because uh, I think it's really nice. So uh, here's the application here. You can see uh, with the this kind of ability, you can record your own name and you can play other people's names as well. And then so he goes through what this looks like, what the experience is, um, how you set it up, uh, what it's going to look like when it works, how you'd build the back end, um, and good amount of code as well to let you walk through um, everything that's going on, and sort of walks you through how you would do it um, in uh, in a nice bit of detail. And it's all uh, in GitHub as well. Really nice. Uh, it's a really great idea as well. Love the idea of it. And um, big thanks to to Marcus for putting that out because I think blog posts like this are super useful. Um, source code examples like this are really useful uh, walkthroughs and stuff and, and everything just really helps people bring it to life as well I think so great um, really nice to see so go check out Marcus's blog post on that um, he's also done a bunch of others as well actually on the pre-meeting experience on um, uh, on device permissions as well so go check those out they're linked at the top of his blog so you can go and, uh, and, go and re read all of them uh, from there all right, I think that's everything I want to talk about this week. This week, uh, what's going on this week? Is it busy or is it not? I think it is quite busy this week. Uh, next week is European Collaboration Summit, so that is going to be super busy. Uh, so this week is probably going to be spent, uh, if I can find some time, to preparing for that. I, I want to go through the session list. Um, I want to do a video about it as well. So what I'll do is try and do a video where I go through as a, like almost like a live stream going through the, the session list. Um... It's happening in Germany. Uh, it's happening over th two days, I think. Um, and so, yeah, what I might try and do is we'll see what happens for the next weekly update. I'm definitely going to do one. It might be towards the end of the Monday uh, next week. We'll have just have to see how it goes because I might be traveling and, and all the rest of it. So uh, either way, there's definitely going to be one. But yeah, plenty of fun things planned for this week as well. Uh, so... Lots going on, lots to look forward to. I think there's also some, uh, if you remember, coming from Microsoft Ignite, we had the announcement around Azure Communication Services that was going to GA in early December. Now, we're getting quite close to early December. We're eight days away. Um, so uh, we'll, I guess we'll see towards next week uh quite how close in early december quite how early early december is going to be uh and whether or not it is going to be first of december or whether we're going to go further into the month so i'm going to keep an eye on that as well for you and obviously you'll be first to know here and uh and on everything else that happens in the team's developer platform space as well have a great week whatever it is you're doing and i will speak to you all next time